Welcome to today's fly pattern. In this episode, I'm going to be tying my skinny nymph. If you're totally new to fly tying, or you just want to brush up on a few fundamentals, we've actually put together a free video course that teaches you things like being able to attach your thread and start off at the beginning of making a fly, applying dubbing to your thread, and then a few different variations of the whip finish knot from simple to more advanced. If that's something that interests you, click through on the link in the description and you can start getting to grips with some of these basics and that'll let you tie along with the patterns that we're making in this series. This is another really easy pattern so whether or not you're a seasoned fly tire looking for quick ammo flies that uh, take no time at all to tie and you don't cry when you lose them or if you're a total beginner looking for an easy pattern to get started on uh, this is one of those flies. I've got in the vise a size 16 compound curved hook from Fish On and I've paired that with a 2mm painted orange tungsten bead. You can use whatever colour bead you want with this. Um, this particular sort of colour choice and size works really well for me in winter months as a dropper fly when I'm targeting grayling. Um, it's equally at home as a sort of nymph suspended under a dry fly for duo type um, you know uh, fishing tactics um, I'd often change that colored bead out for something a bit more drab then um, but uh, it's a, a pretty good sort of go-to olive imitation um, it, it picks up a lot of fish so we've run down that thread I'm going to tie in some tails now and this is about as simple as things get um, this is Coq de Leon. You don't have to use Coq de Leon. Uh, I just have plenty of this to hand and I really, really like it for tailing both nymphs and dries. Um, it's got that wonderful sort of speckled kind of look about it. Um, I'm very, very uh, sort of taken by the way that looks when it's tied in, whether it's on dries or nymphs. And I believe I've said before already, it doesn't matter how many. You don't have to be tying in three perfect looking tails. Just a little bunch of fibres like this will do the job. And we don't need to get the length of the tails right first off because these Coq de Leon fibres are nice and long. We can tie them in pretty much anywhere we like. And once you've got them on, you can basically just get that nice long end and pull until you get the desired length. And that's about right for me. So from there, I'm just going to lock down all of that feather. Then I'm going to actually turn it around and I'm going to come back down the body about halfway. And then I'm going to turn around and come back up the body again. And what that does, it just helps form a little bit of a taper on the body. And then I'm just going to go down one more time up back three quarters of the way and back up and then about half the way and back up and you'll see there we've got a little bit of a taper on that body and that is the body done it looks not particularly uh, complex or um, you know imitative right now but uh, put on a pinch of this dubbing behind that bead and we'll get a very nice looking skinny nymph we don't need a lot of this dubbing and if you've watched any of my videos already, you'll know I like this tight, loose, tight sort of dubbing. Where I'll dub it on very tight at the beginning, leave a little bit slightly looser dubbed in the middle, then tight at the end. And when we wrap that behind a bead, you get lots of fibres that stick out, but they get caught in by that tighter dubbed stuff. And you end up with some, something that sticks to your bead, tease out the loose stuff left with this wonderful almost hackle like effect four or five turns of whip finish there just pull that tight and trim off and then just clear any stray bits of fiber off give it a bit of a pull you can leave these fibers as long or short as you like I'm really only going to this level of detail for the benefit of the camp because when we close up like this with that tight shot we'll just want to make it look like a little bit more special but that's finished at that so it really is just a thread body and the tiniest wisp of dubbing 
if I wanted to go one step further, I might get a dark colour and stripe it across the back. It'll bleed around a lot of the fly. So you won't get that sort of belly and back, but you get a nice sort of darkening to the body. So I'll often do this. I'll use, I'll use a sort of very bright light thread and then finish it off with a little stripe of olive, or I might leave it olive. Um, sorry, I might leave it yellow, a bright sort of yellow body. So yeah, I've usually got a mixture of sort of yellowish bodies and olive bodies like this. I like the effect that just striping a bit of olive has rather than using olive thread because you've got lots of turns of yellow underneath there built up. And when this gets wet, you get a little bit of translucence in that top layer of olive. And some of that green shows through and, uh, sorry, some of that yellow shows through the green and you get this wonderful sort of insecty look. Um, but if you have a look at a kick sample of real olives, they are tiny and skinny. And tying these thread bodies on small hooks like this, it's a, a way to get really close to that profile of especially winter olive nymphs. Um, the ones that have been laid through through the summer and, and late into autumn. Um, they're not even fully mature through winter, so a lot of the food that the grayling in these British streams are getting tend to be these very small, very skinny olives. So give that pattern a whirl. That's my skinny olive nymph.